Hello, and happy Straturday, friends. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Uh, before I get started today, real quick, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. It's going to help immensely. Um, Alright, uh, let's just get down to it. Uh, today we are going to take a deep dive into how to play The Blazing Lord. Uh, the Blazing Lord was released July 30th of 2020. It was last updated March 30th of this year, 2021. Her canon name is Karen. Uh, the credits, what I've got here is Icarus was responsible for the character design and the writing. Anar Talen, and I really apologize if I pronounce that way the hell off. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> um, did the art, the animation, character design assistance. Uh, Snorlaxo did code, gameplay design, and writing assistance. Uh, Ragon, town event, and additional trinket art. Zorak76 for the additional color palettes. Slightly Seal did extra animation assistance. Uh, Wuna did additional effects. And Purple Trash gameplay design assistance. Um... So let's just dive right into the base stats of this character. Um, we'll start with the HP. Uh, the max HP starts at 20 at opening resolve, and it will progress to a 36 at max resolve. Um, this is below average, but not not a lot. Um, it's, a, it's the same growth as a grave robber. It's very close to an occultist's HP as well. Um, so you're going to find that she's just a little frail, she's a little glass cannony in that way, uh, but at the same time, um, she's potent, so that might not matter much. Uh, the next stat here, dodge. Um, her dodge starts at a 10 at opening resolve, and it will progress all the way to a 30 at final resolve. Uh, this is above average, and this is your typical um, 10 to 30 growth for dodge, uh, same as a grave robber or a hellion, um, what are some others, highwayman, houndmaster. So yeah, she's definitely going to dodge more than her fair share of attacks. Uh, Prada's a zero standard, I've got some on her with uh, Lovestruck, but uh, other than that, zero is par for the course. Her speed is actually good, uh, it's a six at opening resolve, and it'll progress to a 7 at third resolve, and progress to an 8 at final resolve. Um, this is the same growth that the occultist has, it's um, within punching distance of the fastest in the game. Like, uh, you, you equip one trinket on her that gives her plus 3 speed, and all of a sudden she's outspeeding um, the fastest class in the game. Uh, so she's definitely, she's gonna go first a decent chunk. But this also leaves her in that that opportune speed range, where if you want to set up something, uh, let's say you want to use a move on her that is uh, empowered by Blight. You want to set up a Blight first. You can have that person outspeed, and her still work with really high speed priority to punish off that Blight setting. Uh, which is probably how I'm going to run uh, in the combat section. Um, next, the accuracy mod, uh, zero. This is not a pro or a con, it's just a kind of standardized way of doing things. Uh, the crit, it starts at a 2% and it will progress to a 6% by, uh, final resolve. Um, this is below average, uh, though some of her skills have their own, uh, good crit bonus. So y you'll be surprised, she's actually gonna crit more than it looks like with this below average base stat. And finally, uh, the damage is going to start at opening resolve with a 5 to 10 and progress to a 9 to 16 at final resolve. Um, this is very, very close to uh, the Highwayman's progression. Up until like the last level, it's very close to Shieldbreaker's damage progression. Um, it's not a perfect match to any of the default classes. Some, there's some variance around the level 3 to 4 range. But uh, basically expect the same kind of damage you get out of a Highwayman uh, from one of her attacks. So let's just dive right into her combat skills. Uh, you'll notice that she's a transformation class, and because of that, you're going to see that she's got 
all of her um, abilities here activated and ready to use. Uh, the first of which is Spirit of the Fox God. Uh, this is usable from rank 1 or 2, and if you are a human, it will change you to Beast Mode, and in doing so will buff 12% damage if in Beast Mode. Uh, I believe this does, similar to the Abomination, have a turn limit attached, and um, if it's standard, that's 3. We'll, we'll investigate that a bit uh, when going to the combat section, as long as I don't forget. But um, it's not a it's not a bad thing, even if that runs out, because you want to switch often with her. At least uh, her kit incentivizes you to switch often. And the other part of that is, when you're in beast mode and you use this, it will change to mode human, and it will buff yourself so that slash heals five stress. Uh, that's the opening level of stress heal off a slash. Uh, at final resolve. It's actually going to be 7, and that is um, pretty sizable, actually, uh, when, she, when you factor in that she's going to give herself some stress damage for being in that beast mode at the end of turn, or at the beginning of the next turn, rather. Her second ability is Slash. It is usable from rank 1 or 2, and can target rank 1 or 2 opponents. This is a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90, a crit modifier of 3%, and it does full damage. It will do an additional 20% damage versus size 2 creatures, and an additional 20% damage if the target's HP is above 80%. So, um, you're gonna find that in, she's kind of got a motif between her two forms. This first human form is good for starting off taking down opponents and her second form is good for finishing off those that are close to death. She has the theming to transform to take out folks, and that's kind of where the um, stress damage kicks in uh, on that second turn in beast form. So if you're gonna time it right to not get stress damage, you kinda wanna approach it in that way, uh, but you don't have to, and I'm probably gonna play in a opposite way when I show you um, combat mode later. Her third ability is Kick. It is usable from rank 3 or 4, and it can target rank 1, 2, or 3 opponents. This is a melee attack. It moves her forward 3 ranks. Has an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 30%, and a crit modifier of plus 1%. Um, this, this will stun the opponent with 100% base, and it will buff herself for 8 dodge and 3 speed. Um, so this, is, this buff is nothing to, uh, to scoff at, and that's a pretty formidable buff, especially if you're going to start a combat with her in the back ranks just to get the stun off. Um, I have a different way of utilizing her that kind of... Uh, disincentivizes me from doing this on round one, but you definitely can get a lot of cool gameplay by doing so, uh, especially if you have people who are um, who you typically want to end up in those back ranks who can still function from rank two or three, and she'll just fling herself to the front rank and uh, shift everybody into the desired position afterwards. Her fourth ability, and her final uh, human form ability, is Foxfire. This is usable from any rank, and it can target rank 2, 3, or 4 of the opposing side. This is a ranged attack, I believe it is her only ranged attack. Yep. With an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of negative 70%, and a crit modifier of plus 5%. This marks the target and it will debuff that target from minus 3 speed with 100% base. Um, just the fact that she has the speed debuff, even though it is single target, and a stun, I mean, she's got like two of the, uh, what I consider the power combo if you are looking at stun comps. Um, you want them to, if you're running a stun comp, you want to outspeed them uh, more often than not. That's a pretty standard rule for living, uh, but it's extra important on stun comps. 
So her uh, fifth ability here, the first beast ability, is Essence Steel. It is usable from rank 1 or 2, and it targets rank 1 or 2 opponents. Uh, this is a melee attack with an accuracy base of 100, a crit modifier of plus 5%, and it does full damage. This attack does 50% additional damage if the target is below 30% HP. So this is what I was talking about before. Um, her beast mode is bloodthirsty. Her beast mode, is, it just lives to take people out. And as this, as further theming, this, this attack also heals herself once she attacks with it for 3 HP. I believe that goes up a decent chunk. Yeah, to 5 HP at Final Resolve. Um, when you consider her HP is 36, that is a sizable chunk of her total. So that's actually pretty good. Her sixth ability is Cut Down. This is usable from any rank, and it will target the first, second, and third ranked opponents at the same time. Uh, this is a melee attack that will move her forward one rank. It has an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of negative 60%, and I don't know if there was a patch that ever changed this, but I believe that negative 60 is a... Uh, is a rounded number. Um, the technical number is negative 65% for the front rank, negative 55% for the second rank, and negative 65 for the back rank. So it slightly prioritizes the rank 2 opponent. But to finish this read here, uh, the crit mod is a plus 4%. Uh, which is a, a significant crit mod to see, especially when you factor in this is a uh, three-character AoE attack here. Um, so a crit of a plus anything at opening resolve for an AoE attack is really good. Um, and then you factor in plus 15% damage versus bleeding, blighted, or stunned folks. And if they are multiples of those, they do stack. So you can get up to a bonus of 45% damage, but I really wouldn't prioritize a stunned target with this. So if they're just bleeding and blighted, that is the perfect way to maximize this for a bonus 30% damage on each target that qualifies for. And she will do an additional 30% damage versus marked foes. Um, I'm sure there's a perfect party to encapsulate marked, bleeding, and blighted. Uh, I didn't devote quite enough time to come up with that perfect party, uh, but it may be worthwhile. Her seventh ability is Decimate. It is usable from rank 1 or 2, and it will cleave through all ranks of your opposing party. Uh, it's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 70%, and a crit mod of negative 5%. This attack will clear enemy corpses, and it has a guaranteed crit if target's HP is below 15%. So if you've got a guy hanging on by that dreaded and cursed 1 HP, uh, this is, this is going to crit. Uh, and you may not originally understand how important that is. Um, the fact that you are guaranteeing a crit means you are going to crit stress heal. She's going to take, I think, somewhere around 10 stress just for being in that form. And if you're going to crit heal for that stress, that's probably really, really, really good and useful here. And you may have two enemies that qualify. You may just have the one. Uh, but guaranteeing a crit is very useful on a cleave like this. Then you factor in clear enemy corpse. This is going to help her uh, reach folks with her single target attacks that only reach as far back as rank 2. So this clear enemy corpse is really going to um, bring people to the table, so to speak. And you don't have to necessarily focus on your other party members making up for that shortcoming, which is the typical way. So let's breeze through her camping skills as quick as we can here. Um, she has generic encourage and generic pep talk, uh, but Wound Care has been replaced by Onigiri. Onigiri is a time cost 2 camping skill. Uh, you choose a companion, and they will heal 15% of their HP, remove Bleed and Blight, and 
they will take a buff to consume 100% less food for the next 40 rounds. So you can basically make it so any food checks, whoever you've targeted this with, will not be consuming food. If you've already got someone in your party, like uh, the milkmaid, for instance, who does not consume food, you can basically make it so that after camping with this, if you have enough time cost points, that is, you can make it so that only half your party is eating at every food check, and that's two food every time you have one of those unfortunate food check rolls. That is not a bad thing at all, and 40 rounds will last you a significant amount of the dungeon. Assuming you don't get bogged down with really long fights, that is. But her first uh, camping skill here, well, technically second, is Lift Spirits. Lift Spirits is a time cost 4 camping skill. Um, it's going to give buffs to all companions. It's going to give a 15% damage buff for 4 battles. And it's going to give a 10% stress heal received buff for 4 battles. And it will also heal all her companions for a minus 15 stress. This does not heal or buff herself, but this is a very good friendly skill for her to be using uh, at the campfire. Her technically third custom camping skill is Maiden's Dance. Maiden's Dance is a time cost 4 camping skill uh, where she targets herself, she's going to prevent nighttime ambush, and this may produce a unit of holy water. Um, there's additional chance unlisted here uh, for another effect that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and it's also going to give a buff to the entire party where they're going to receive 15% less stress for four battles. Um, this is really going to be good for everybody in the party. If you've got if you've got a better prevent nighttime ambush, which there aren't there aren't a lot of, but if you have one, use that one instead. Uh, but this is also going to help her and that's that minus 15% stress for the next four battles is actually a really big boon for her specifically. Uh, the fourth of her custom gaming skills is Saki. It is a time cost 3 ability, and you will target yourself and one companion. Um, this will de-stress them. This will heal 25 stress from both targets. And then there's a chance that each of them will get a slight debuff for the next four battles. Uh, there's a 35% chance that the Blazing Lord herself will take a minus 15 accuracy for four battles and there's a 50% chance that her companion will take minus 15 accuracy for the next four battles. This is a really good uh, double stress heal. Uh, if you factor that in, it's going to be optimized, used properly on like effective targets and so on. This is going to heal 50 stress or potentially more um, for three time cost. So that's actually... Um, it's really good. The debuff itself is not that bad of a negative, especially if you come uh, packed to the gill with uh, medicinal herbs in your inventory, you should be fine. And our final camping skill is Blessings. This is a time cost 2 skill. You select a companion, they're going to get a buff to take minus 20% stress for the next 4 battles and they're going to take 10% less crits for the next four battles as well. Um, this is quite the boon, especially if you're going to target somebody who's... Uh, maybe maybe they have guard tech, or maybe you force guard on that person. Maybe they're a uh, self-marking or repost class. Somebody who's going to get hit a lot. Um, you want to target them with this. They're going to take less stress which is going to be great, especially if, you know, they're taking all those stress attacks off everyone else's hands, and they're going to receive less crits. So this is just going to be keeping folks alive if you um, have no other ways to use that, that allotted time during camping. All right, real briefly, um, she her crit effect, she is going to give herself a temporary buff to additional damage. Uh, on crits, and she does have custom virtue and affliction, 
uh, the, the affliction will be 75% chance. And the special thing to remember here um, that you need to keep in mind, if you do get afflicted and you transform into her beast mode, you will not be able to transform back. Uh, you cannot force yourself to become human again in combat if you are afflicted. Uh, her virtue is very good and has a 25% chance. Um, I did not dive intently into the stats. I've got enough to talk about uh, with this class uh, without getting too into the weeds on her virtue and affliction. Just know that her virtue is really good. As far as synergy ideas for this character, if you plan on using, let's say, let's say you're like me and you just love the idea of using cut down and trying to optimize that, um, you really, really, really want somebody who's got bleed and or blight AOE attacks. Um, and hell, maybe, you, maybe you've got a trinket that can help do either of those, or turn one into both. Um, I'm going to utilize a shield breaker in a similar way here in a moment that should be able to cause bleed and blight with relative ease. Uh, but that's one synergy I can think of. Otherwise, um, even if you put together a party where the offensive power isn't overwhelming and you can just weaken most of the foes uh, in the first round, which unless you're stunning them also, I wouldn't really advise. You can always transform, hit them with decimate, get some guaranteed crits, kill probably most of them at that point and at the end of round two and finish cleaning up with the rest of your party. Uh, so, so there's a lot of interesting ways to run her. Even if you are not optimizing the other party members, she is going to be a good contributor on your team. Quirks-wise, what would I lock on her? Uh, this one's got Hot to Trot because I like to come out with Cut Down on round one. Uh, so Hot to Trot is going to make up for a lot of that. And basically, if I have had some stress build up in previous fights, this is going to help me kind of ramp that down, because I do get a lot of crits on round one, I find, with her. Uh, Luminous, that's also pretty good. Uh, the speed buff, you can take it or leave it. Uh, I love it, but uh, it's not necessary. The dodge, on the other hand, is exactly what I want here. Um, basically what I would prioritize, uh, melee damage with her, uh, I would prioritize that. Uh, dodge and or prot, depending on how you want to run her. If you want to trinket to either of those, you can help with quirks as well. Um, melee crit is also a good thing that I would focus on. Alright, let's take a, a look through her trinkets real quick. Um, some of them I don't have. Um, and some of them are equipped on the one I will be taking out, and I'll go over briefly before I do. Uh, but let's start with her rare trinket, or very rare, excuse me, trinket. Yasakani no Magatama. Uh, this is going to have 2% bonus on transformation stress. So at the end of each round in your transformed form, instead of doing 10 stress damage to yourself, it's going to do 20 stress damage to yourself. Uh, but in return, on kill, you will buff yourself plus 10% damage if in beast mode. Um, I have not messed around with this a lot, but um, if you can stack that damage bonus in beast mode up enough, then um, pretty soon it's not going to matter that your 200% on transformation stress has been, has been boosted so much, because... Well, if you're using her in the conventional way, that is. Because if you're taking people out with her, and she just one-shots somebody and then the battle's over, you never have that stress happen, because it doesn't happen until the next round. So this can be very good. I have not tried to utilize it in a way, uh, but it might be worth looking into. The second trinket here is Counter Beast Ofuda. Uh, it is a rare trinket. It gives you a plus 15 accuracy against marked opponents and a bonus 15% damage versus marked opponents, but it will disable transformation. 
So it locks you into her first three moves, which isn't all that bad. You can come in with a stun on round one, giving anybody, any ally time to mark some folks. And then you can just start taking out the ones in front and maybe even uh, helping mark the ones in the back for an Arbalist later. So if you want to use a kind of marked party, this is not a bad way to do it. Um, just keep in mind, you're not going to be able to transform. Her uncommon trinket here is Emperor's Sigil. Um, it's going to change Foxfire pretty drastically. It's going to give Foxfire a bonus 150% damage and take away Foxfire's ability to mark and debuff. So that minus speed debuff and that mark will go away, but in exchange you'll be able to reach the back ranks with some decent damage um, from, I believe, Foxfire is usable from almost any rank or any rank, right? Yeah. So you can reach basically anywhere on the field from her position. The other uncommon trinket she has is the Ritual Mask. Um, it's going to give a plus 15% chance that monsters are surprised. It's going to give you an additional 4% crit at the expense of 3 accuracy. Uh, this is not a bad thing, especially if you're running into uh, dark runs or in situations where you're not getting scouts very often. This can help set the balance back in your party's favor. And the final trinket I'm going to go over real quick here is the Meditation Beads Common Trinket. Um, it's going to give her an additional 30% stress relief skills while camping. Um, keep in mind that she has a couple good ones in that regard. Um, and it's going to give her a plus 10% prot at the cost of 10 dodge. Um, so if you're going for a prot build, this is also really functional because it's going to turn... Well, plus 30% uh, may not be a huge difference for something like Lit Spirits. That's going to give you, what, like an additional 4 stress healing? Uh, but if you're going to use Sake on somebody, uh, that's, the, that's a different story. Because an additional 30% of Sake is somewhere around 8 bonus stress, something like that. So you're going to be doing more of like a 35 stress heal. Uh, which is pretty damn impressive uh, for a time cost 3. So, um, let's see. I have some trinkets to go over on the one I'm going to be bringing into the dungeon. This is probably my favorite trinket uh, that she has, the Artificial Regalia of the Cursed Emperor. Uh, it's a crystalline trinket. It'll do an additional 10% damage. It's going to give her more HP. It's going to give her 25% more HP, which is going to turn that 36 into a 45, which is really nice. Um, and the important part here that I use it for is the friendly skill is now going to activate Repost on herself. Uh, that Repost is going to have a slight um, buff to its crit chance, and it's going to have no negative debuff to its damage. So it's going to do a full damage Repost. Uh, for three turns every time you activate um, her friendly skill. The only one she's got is Spirit of the Fox God, so every time you transform, it is going to reinitialize your repost for three turns. Um, and on an attack miss, here's the negative here, it's going to stress you out for three. So if you're stuck in uh, beast form, let's say, and you keep missing, uh, you're going to stress ramp pretty quick. And her other trinket here is actually rarely found by using her Maiden's Dance ability. Uh, this can produce holy water, but it can also produce this trinket, Rekka the Demonic Wisp. It is a familiar trinket with a plus 5% damage per 10 torch. And on attack hit, it is going to reduce torch by 10. And if the hero was hit, the torch is going to increase by 5. This is especially good if you are using a prot build, not a dodge build. I love the shit out of dodge, so I, I uh, often optimize in that fashion. Uh, but if you're using prot instead, this is going to really, really, really help you. Um, because you're going to get hit every time she's targeted, or most of the time, rather than avoid it. And thus you're going to get some of that torch back. 
Um, but you can stack that damage up pretty goddamn high. Uh, usually I end up with something around 40 or 45 percent damage in combats because I love going out in torch runs. So, but let's see if I can find a good. Oh, no, I need a I need a high level quest, don't I? Maybe a level three in here. <laughs> oh, I got the wrong shield right here. Give me a second. Let me fix that. All right, we got the right uh, shield breaker out now. We're gonna go on a quest here, uh, and again, the point of this party build is going to be to set uh, blight and bleed because of this trinket um, with impale on the shield breaker, and then follow up that impale on the shield breaker with um, specific AOE damage from cut down. I knew all these paths once. Now they are as twisted as my own ambitions. All right. There is some one fight this way. I do not want to go this way because I'm going to have to backtrack a ton uh, to find more combats. So I will mop that up later and I'll just deal with it um, until then. Hey, backpack. Oh, I should probably do it twice. In radiance, may we find. All right, victory. here we are, at 94 radiant lights. So this uh, Rekka damage bonus is going to be about 45 percent plus on per this turn, which is insane. This is a really small mob for me. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so we did not get the shield breaker to luck, luck into the first turn. But, fortunately, we get a damage bonus on cut down. Let's see the difference between these two folks here. A decisive public. Well, the crit didn't help. Let's, um, hit him with that. We really, really, really want the shield breaker to go first in this party. It just has not, unfortunately, happened yet. Alright, there goes the Blight and the Bleed. Normally this would factor into my cut down situation, but I'm not going to, uh... I think I'm going to be transforming her back this turn instead. What I want to do... You know what, I'm going to give her two turns. Let's see how that changes things. No one to heal. Let's... Stun and move you. I got the stun at least. Alright, so I'm, I'm gonna take that stress damage. Yikes. And then I'm gonna change form. 22 stress, yeah, that's, that's a little much. But I can slowly start chiseling that down by transforming once for one round, and then transforming back, um, and then using, I believe it lasts for three rounds, yeah, the slash heal seven stress effect lasts for three rounds. So that is going to be very helpful for de-stressing after those situations. Alright, battle number two, here we go. Hopefully this time Shieldbreaker will go first, I can show everything as it's intended, optimized. Shield breaker. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, got the blight and the bleed on both front targets. We're gonna set up set up move of centuries. Bring it on. Festering fear consumes the mind. You are the crappest ghoul in ghoul history. Alright. Let's see how much damage I can do to these folks. Oof. 9 to 16. Now keep in mind, this is a 40% of her 
full base damage move, doing 9 to 16 to this dog. And then 5 to 10 to this 40% proc creature. Masterfully so, executed. without the low roll here, <laughs> that is a really effective use of a turn. Um, and then you factor in, if you got a shield breaker in your party, you're bypassing that prod. Which can be a problem if you're using cleaves with the Blazing Lord, but not in this case, I don't think. Stress is already down to 6. I'm gonna stress heal a bit, even though the Magus didn't also need it. Mortality clarified in a single strike. Hmm. The horror. The horror I'm not a fan of, but I believe I brought. Yeah, I, I have. I have these. Let's start using those. Um. Fuck it. Let's extend your blight a bit. Alright. 14 stress. I can get rid of half of that. Transforming, dipping the laudanum in, and slaying that food. Down to 54 light though. I'm gonna light up again. Eight. You have to do this. If I do this, they're both dead. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Beautiful. Beautiful. This expedition at least promises Let's success. See. I can probably get a good kick in to kind of show how that works. Um, you're definitely going to want her in the back of the party to start off with, because no matter what, she's going to transition to that first rank. Um, so it really doesn't matter which one of these two she's in, but she needs to be in A back rank. So if you want to keep somebody in the back, if they've got like trinkets that need to keep them in rank 4, or skill utility that needs to, then you can you can make that work. Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption, malformed with See if we luck into a fight over here, if we have to start searching for one. Really depends on this scout. There it is. There it is, I don't even have to walk much. The sparkling eyes of Okay, okay. This is the perfect time for me to have to switch into the stun, because I would love to kill him before he can get anything off. Um... Here. That's all you can do from this rank right now. Uh, this will not fuck anything up. Let's do it. Uh, that's gonna be really bad for Plague Doc if I do that, so I'm gonna just do this. It should still bleed. Yeah. Alright, stunnies. Let's do this. Did not get the stun. She's not trinketed to it, so that's not necessarily a problem. But that final level stun being 140 base, uh, the self buff of 20 dodge is really good, and 5 speed is really good too. Let's see. I'm just gonna cut down to try and damage these guys. Precision and and that's 3 crits. I love it. Let's um, get back in rank 1. I would love the Shieldbreaker to get another turn, so that I can set the Blights before her next turn. Um, a singular so let's hook that up real quick. We should get a, a KO here in a second. Um, because I'm gonna... nope. That one. So I'm gonna do that. So this guy's gonna die, and then I'll have three targets, all blighted and bleeding, by the time she gets her next turn. So it's really just a matter of... Uh, Putting a party together where you can optimize how she works and what you want to take advantage of, because she's got a lot of uh, special utility in her in her kit that you can uh, optimize in different ways. Sedated. All right, we're gonna stay in this form. We're gonna get one more cleave. Their formation that crit twenty three is massive. Offensive. Okay, this guy's pretty much dead. Um, he's not there yet. As a matter of fact, yeah, he's still not there. He's gonna be 2 HP away from dead without me touching him here in a second. So, 
Let's just um I didn't even get the stun. Holy shit. Game over. Now I didn't really have a need to run Corpse Clear, but again, you can run her Decimate skill in this form um, if you are concerned about corpses piling up so that she can't reach uh, with her other abilities. Um, but Decimate is really good in that way. It's always a good thing to keep in mind. I'm going to transform back and try and get rid of all this stress. So I've got 11. Um, improvement. There's a good chance I might get a crit or a kill here, which is going to stress heal me. Annihilated. Confidence surges there goes. as the enemy crumbles. All right. Foolish can't believe I did the whole thing without going into my uh, into custom colored one. Come on now. Anyway. I highly urge you uh, to play the Blazing Lord if you haven't already. Um, this is this is not a super old class, but it did come out last year, um, and I highly recommend it. Uh, once I started playing it, I just really fell for this class. Its kit is uh, magnificent, and its art style is really, really good. If, especially, you know, she's got a lot of skin options, and if, you know, the eyes bug you, she has some, some no-eye variants as well. But I highly urge you to try her out. And uh, soon, my class, the Magus, is going to come out, uh, and she will have other, you know, recolors, but she's also going to come out with an Aerith skin that uh, I'm proud of, even though it doesn't technically have all of the normal Darkest Dungeon uh, aesthetic bits to her. Um, I worked really hard on it, so uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to have, a, hopefully another Darkest Dungeon Let's Play coming up on Wednesday again, and then next Saturday we'll see what class I cover. Thanks for watching. Stay frosty.